Good morning, ladies. And I'm so excited to be here. It's Carol Laurie, Empowered Against Recurrence, Empowered Through Treatment, and Empowered Approach Towards Breast Cancer. Empowerment is the word. And talking about empowerment, I'm here with my dear friend and colleague, Deborah Atkinson, who is the CEO of her program, Flipping 50. And she has an empowered approach to exercise lifting weights, which I do all the time. And she's here to, sh it's not just a haphazard thing that you think you're doing this right. There's a lot of information you need to know to do it right. So Deborah, welcome. And thank you for being here with us. Well, thank you so much for having me. I know this is a special group and you take excellent care of them. So it's an honor to be here. As you do uh, to the women that are in your program. So tell us about, you know, there is the, what I call the couch potato syndrome. Mm -hmm. which is when you don't feel well, <clears throat> it's hard to get off the couch and start exercising and or start what I call positive movement. How do women start and talk about the right and the quote unquote unright or wrong or way that you could get injured that women need to avoid? Yeah, great question. And I think we, we want to break that into several pieces because so much of the time, if you're a, a midlifer, for sure, the first inclination will be that we need to do some kind of cardiovascular exercise. Mm -hmm. And and although I do agree with you, and I think we're on the same page, movement is very important and, and getting it in any way you can with, I think the term now is exercise snacks. You know, whether oh, really? it's- I never heard of that before. Five minutes or it's 10 minutes of movement throughout the day you know, in order to increase gradually your strength, your endurance, your stamina, so that it still feels good, even when you stop. And I think that's a big, important factor. You should feel good when you finish, not wasted, not, not taxed or drained, but actually feel good. And that can be a new thing to women who are certainly in their 40s, 50s, or 60s, and who were you know, growing up told, you know, you leave it all on the floor, you have to uh, work yourself to death or be drained in order for it to do some good. And I think certainly with with this group, that's definitely not true. We want we want to gain the strength so that we've got it in all areas and for healing specifically and mindset. So moving is kind of level one. Level two would be let's go to strength training as opposed to do more cardiovascular exercise because of the benefit of strength training to your posture, to your overall energy, your stamina, and, you know, not to go missed, but it's the way you carry yourself. And I think that changes so much. And when you feel stronger, literally, and have more endurance, literally, then you feel like you can do more of the things that you love. And the whole idea is, I'm a, I'm an exercise pusher. I want you to be codependent. I want you to love it. I want you to want to love it and do some more. And that's the way we do it, by making it pleasurable. And the benefits almost immediate, not far off down the road. I like what you said about the way you carry yourself, because I know my mom, you know, as she was mm -hmm. older, had a hunch. Yeah. And I think there is a physical component to that, but I think there's a big psychological component to that because the body and the mind match. And if you're empowered, if you're feeling strong, if you're enjoying your life, that curve will be much less than if you're like a victim of osteoporosis or breast cancer or any other illness. So I think what you just said about posture and the way we carry ourselves is really important. Well, and there are studies showing that we don't know which comes first, the chicken or the egg. When you think of someone who is grieving or fatigued or tired, we typically do. We come down with gut forward, head hang, and we're rounded forward, kind of internal. And that actually compromises you physically. So the emotion may cause the posture, but it's also true that if you can cause the posture to be different, even if for 30 minutes while you're exercising, some of that will carry over to mood and mindset benefit. You can, I'm writing here, you can uncause the posture. 
Yeah. You're changing your mindset. Absolutely. Right? Yes. So what's the third um, level? So the third level is at some point adding high intensity interval training, but really the missing point I hope that all of you heard or didn't hear was endurance training really for most of us, unless you are someone who absolutely loves and thrives in it. And yet for even you, it, there may be a time when that is not what your body actually wants, needs, or or will thrive doing. And, and I'm in that camp, you know, having not had necessarily a huge health issue, I realized that there was a time when I just crossed a threshold and my body no longer really responded well to endurance training. Although up here, I seem to think I, I still need it. So I work with that demon all the time. What is endurance training? Let's define that. Cause I mean, for someone who's not exercise savvy, yeah, I think people understand what strength training is, and yes. but I don't. What what is endurance training, and how does it differ from strength training? Yeah, so if we go way off on the deep end, it's endurance training is training for those longer, you know, six k or ten k runs, but it's really relevant to you or to me. So for for those of us who haven't been exercising, thinking you should go and do something for an hour, that potentially would put your body into, I mean, in endurance training. And there's actually more muscle wasting that can occur when you're doing long endurance training and there's worse oxidative damage. So if you truly wanna look at what can reverse oxidative damage, it is actually low level movement, moving more and strength training under controlled circumstances. So we're not doing it for hours at a time. We're doing a high quality workout and then we're done and we recover adequately and we only do two of them a week. And that's been oh, proven really? to yeah, help reduce oxidative stress, which it's, it's said this, so in this way, strength training is the only type of exercise that can actually reverse the effects of aging. I have to write that down because that's a big concern. But interesting for me, there's a couple things you just said. First of all, oxidative stress is for me, as someone who works with breast cancer, a, a critical phrase yeah. because radiation and chemotherapy create, an, especially radiation, create enormous amounts of oxidative stress. And mm -hmm. this is the other side of medical oncology, uh, breast cancer that medical oncology doesn't really address. It's okay, you have these treatments, which you've chosen, which are necessary for you, create mm -hmm. oxidative stress. Ma where I come in, which is really important is, guess what? We can reduce that oxidative stress with mm -hmm. functional nutrition, supplements and what Deborah is talking about exercise positive movement is a critical component and um i often talk about beginning with 5 minutes so when i first started getting my body back in gear i live in a very hilly neighborhood and i walked outside and immediately had a hill and i went out for 5 minutes and back for 5 minutes Mm -hmm. And I could have said, oh, you're just, you know, a couch potato, forget it. It's not worth it. But the next day I was out there mm -hmm. and the next day and the next day, and at the end of the week, I was able to do 10 minutes out and 10 minutes back. And now I do between two and three miles several times a week. And I've just started adding my weights. I look ridiculous, but I love it. So um, I think what you're saying about, you know, doing this high intensity a couple of times a week in the right order is really important for women to understand. Yes. And it's it's listening to your body and where you are right now so that you really have the, you know, at the end of the workout, I, I finished feeling like I could have done more, but it's OK to stop the workout feeling in that way and very gradually begin to push the envelope. So especially smart when you're healing and or you're starting to get into it at first. Because there is some science that says the older we get in your 40s, your 50s, your 60s or beyond, we have fewer of the pleasure receptors that occur. We hear about the exercise high or the endorphins. We don't have as many of those working for us. So you want to look for them in other ways of 
listening to music that you love, maybe walking with a friend that you love, looking forward to that as well. But there are other ways to increase your serotonin, your dopamine, and those feel-good hormones that will help you embellish the reaction that you have to the exercise. But if you're feeling like you're just flat, you don't quite feel that same thing you did, there is a reason for it. Well, that's interesting. So if we don't do it in the right order for the right amount of time, it can actually emotionally make us feel worse. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. So a woman who is recovering from breast cancer treatment and doesn't feel so great, which is really common, uh, where should she start and where in your program? Let's talk about the programs that you offer. Mm -hmm. Which one? Where should she start? I know you're offering a special right now. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so we're open just for a few more short days. So we start the the strength begins April 1st and it's called stronger for a reason, right? Clear is better than clever all the time. <laughs> um you'll never see me post a before and after picture. We we cherish the internal changes really. Mm-hmm. Um but it's twice a week. And the reason for that is is many fold, really, when we're talking to women who may be in midlife or who are recovering like this group in any age and stage and need to definitely build up, buff up, but do so dancing with where's my energy right now and, and how do I feel and what's going on for me. So we do twice a week, allowing plenty of recovery in between the... Um, Science has always been a little iffy on this, but the rumor that got passed is every 48 hours. That's actually the research always stated at least 48 hours of recovery. And what we've learned is that for adults over about 40, there's a point where you actually do better with 72 hours of recovery. So instead of that Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you may have done at one point in your life, doing a Monday, Thursday, for instance, schedule for strength training just twice a week, just keeping those those steady gives you at least that two full days in between to fully recover. We have to remember exercise is a breakdown activity. So you're breaking down muscle, you're causing many micro tears. And that sounds maybe terrible, but that's what's supposed to happen because then it's in the rest and recovery in between that the body gets stronger, that the muscle repairs itself, but not just to where it was, to a little bit stronger. And that's how you start with three pounds, then you can pick up five. Or you started with five, and then you can pick up eight. Because you're one, and now I'm up to three or five. I mean, there you go, go, right? I started with zero for a long time. I mean, it was just enough to get my body up those hills to be able to breathe. But it's, I, I think it's, um, I think mindset is a very big part of this, which is why I really encourage everyone to, and I'm going to post the link here um, to, hi, Nicole, to um, Deborah's program, because I did send out an email. I'm going to send out another email to all of you on my list. Um, I think mindset is critical. And in our society, there are these major things you need to do. And nobody talks about having a coach to help you. It's sort of like you're supposed to do Dr. Google or research Google or do something online and all of a sudden you're going to do it. Well, it doesn't work like that. Mm-hmm. Change is not easy. You need a coach. You need someone like Deborah to really help you know that you're safe. You're doing it in the right order. You're not going to like go from zero to high intensity and then, you know, tweak your neck with a too heavy of a weight or mm-hmm. pull an arm muscle. It, we need to like do this in the right way. Amen. Yes. You know, and I think a lot of women, men too, potentially, but I think women take this on more because we've always been the caregivers and we we think somehow that we should be able to figure it out on our own. And yes. we, we, there's a little pride or maybe a little ego with that. And yet <clears throat> there are so many modifications. There are so many offerings that, you know, it it would be, uh, you know, a part-time job to sort out what it is is that I should actually do and what it is that I shouldn't. And, And there are a lot of great marketers out there, 
marketing fitness products or services that don't necessarily have the delivery behind them and truly desire to help. So it's, it's a, you know, it's a battlefield and you do have to sort out, is this a voice I could trust? Is this someone that I could listen to? But it's not just a list of exercises. Boy, I love those workout of the days posted. I'm like, if that were personal training, why are we not all fit? You know, why, if that worked, we can all read, like, why would we not be doing that? There's just so much more involved. And it's, it's also how, how do you set yourself up? Where should your weight be? Where should you feel the work? Where should you not feel the work? And the little nuances that help you be comfortable, but also focus on the right muscles and not on the wrong ones. In the right order. <laughs> exactly. Very true. Because you can easily hurt your back. I mean, you know, or you're, you know, you think that you're doing this right with the five pound weights and you've never lifted weights before. And the next thing you know, you've tweaked your neck muscles and you've pulled your deltoid out of alignment. And, you know, you're just going, forget this. I'm never going to exercise. And you go back to being a couch potato. So um, I think that having coaches for specific areas of your health is so smart. Mm -hmm. And people say to me, well, it's too much money. You know what's too much money? Not feeling well and going to the doctor who is disease treated. They'll treat you, they'll quote unquote treat you. They'll give you some pain medication for your shoulder or your neck, but they won't help set you in realignment. And then you're going to be in pain and need to see the acupuncturist or the chiropractor. You can avoid all of that by, you know, working with someone such as Deborah, who I've known for like seven years. We've known each other through this wonderful community of Mindshare. So I know that what she's doing is of the highest quality and she is an expert in her field. And notice the phrase flipping 50. <laughs> we're not a group of 20 year olds in here, ladies. You know, this is we're midlife and beyond. I'm in the beyond category of midlife. So um, but I'm, you know, I'm out there exercising and I'm out there taking my supplements and I'm going to be vibrant when I'm 80 and many, many years, but it's going to be here before we know it. So I, um, I want to encourage everyone to make a smart decision. And I will post uh, in this Facebook page and my private group, once again, the link to Deborah's program, which starts um, at the April 1st. It's a good day to start. It's the beginning right. of the month. No, no fooling. Yes. <laughs> any, um, any last words of wisdom for the women here about like, you know, I've been a couch potato. I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. Or what if I can't keep up? Or what if I'm not in good enough shape? What about how can we encourage women to not feel badly if they're not already superwoman? Which yeah, I, I you're encouraged to do what you can do. So number one, the weight you select will be the thing that determines how hard or how easy this is. Maybe you want to start with nothing in your hands or soup cans, just something very light so that you're doing slightly more than you were doing yesterday. And then we take in the data for how did my body feel after I did that? And we know we can go forward. We need to stay right here. Or maybe we need to go back and do a little less weight. So you're perfectly capable if you are going through daily activities of living, of starting. And I like to think of it this way, and you know, I don't know how old you are here, but if you take your age and you add 20 years to it and you plan on being here in 20 years, 20 years from now, I mean, imagine how old you are now and subtract 20 years from that. You know, at 38, I probably thought 58 was old. And, and now if I look back, there are a few things that I might be able to say, I wish I would have started or imagine had I started then, right? So at 38, I was very young, right? Now I'm thinking, and at 20 years or 30 years to your current age, you may wish at that point you had gotten started, right? It yeah. is the exact same from 60 to 30 as it is from 90 to 30 or 90 yeah, to 60. You know, you know, a big uh, draw for me is my daughter said to me, who is 27 and a second year medical student. And she said, mom, 
I don't want you to be in a wheelchair like granny was, which is my mother at the end of her life. And I went, no, I'm not. That's not going to be me. And that was like, okay, I'm out there at those hills several times a week. And it's never too late. No, to, you don't be in a wheelchair. You can be 80 and 90 and older and be in vibrant health. And that's what Deborah and I are really messaging to you all because we don't see that message in our American advertising. It's all about you have right. you let yourself deteriorate, you take a pill, and then mm -hmm. you know that's how you, and then you're still sick. So um I think that there is a lot to be said about what Deborah is what we do right this moment keeps us from being in a wheelchair. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And we know so much more now than we ever have. We are, we are it collectively changing the way people age. We can, we know we don't have to lose muscle mass. We don't have to lose more bone density. We can hold on to what we've got if we're doing the right things. And it's not just for us. You know, I think there's no more important health influencer in the world than a midlife or or slightly older woman because of the generations she influences, her daughters, her her in-laws, her nieces, her own peers, and then often still having parents or in-laws who look to you for advice. No one, no politician has that kind of influence. And it starts with what are you doing? What message are you sending? What message are you sending to yourself? It starts with yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes. How are you going to take care of yourself so you mm -hmm. can then present yourself to others in the world of who you are and mm -hmm. how you're how you are in yourself? I mean, that is such an empowered stance. Um, I love that word and I love your work, Deborah, and thank you so much. And um, we will I will post again here on the Facebook page and the Facebook group, I'm going to send out another email and I really encourage women to make a very smart decision for yourself and join Deborah's group, which is beginning in April. It's hard to believe it's April. So excited. Know, right? <laughs> yes. Thank you for being here, Deborah, and talking to my community and for everything. And we'll hopefully see each other this year at Mindshare. Absolutely. All right. And hope Have to see you today, time. everyone. This is Carol yeah. signing off for now and join Deborah's program because it's starting really soon. Bye for now. <laughs>